Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Smith here, the Sarah Speaks podcast, and I'm here at the Monte Cecilia Park, after a day of rain, it's nice to have a bit of a dry spell and get out into nature. So this is going to be the third instalment in my The Flaws of Feminism series and I thought today I would talk about the differences between men and women and how feminism has really driven a wedge between men and women and is really destroying the possibility of good, healthy relationships. And unfortunately, that actually is part of the globalist plan. And maybe I can elaborate a little bit on that as we go. So, let's go. It is a little bit windy, but I'll try and keep the mic protected and um, we'll head this way and see how we go. So, feminism. Getting a bit sick of saying that word, to be honest. And it's just really starting to sound more and more dirty every time I say it <laughs> but yes feminism we take it for granted don't we and we just we we think it's a wonderful thing and women love to admit to being feminists and somehow it makes them more righteous and more empowered and more progressive and more feminine or female or more womanly and I just find that that's that's the irony of the whole concept of feminism it's actually made women less feminine and it's made them more masculine so in order to be a good feminist we've had to drop a lot of our endearing features and our endearing qualities in order to basically step into a man's world because that's what we were encouraged to do go out and be our own breadwinner go out and act like men and not care about sacred union anymore go out and be the boss be the boss lady Rather than take pride in raising a family, creating a home, it's a very underrated career, let's put it that way, because I do feel like it's, um, to do it properly, you have to, it's a, it's a full-time job, being being a homemaker and to make a house a home you have to put your love into it you have to put your time into it your energy you have to take care of it obviously and then the children within that home and your husband and I think one of the key things that I've come to realize is that Men love to be able to come home to a sanctuary where they can let their guard down and they're no longer out in the world being the warrior, fighting a good fight. And they can come home, put their feet up, 
enjoy some good food, enjoy their wife and enjoy their children, and decompress. But women don't want to facilitate that, and women no longer feel a sense of pride, generally speaking, of course. Um, there are women that still want to be the primary caregiver and want to be the homemaker and take pride in being a wife and a mother but it's not it's not the norm now and the argument is oh that's just social conditioning that women are the nurturers and I just think, well, but they're the ones that can feed a baby when it's been born. A man can't do that. How is that social conditioning? It's actually just biological creation. So, of course, along with the physical attributes of a female, to nurture her children and her babies the brain has also developed in a way that best suits child rearing and again I'm speaking in generalizations here but in terms of being emotional and being more heart based and more feelings based that is the amazing thing about being a woman because children are very much driven by their emotions and anyone that's worked with two-year-olds knows exactly what it's like that they're up and down one minute they're in tears next minute they're laughing and it's you have to be like water you have to flow when you're with young children and you can't you can't take it all too seriously but you still have to be able to meet them in a serious way and you have to be able to respond to their emotional needs. And men evolve differently, you know. Men evolve to go and be the hunters and the... He's a little puppy. Hello, little puppy. Men evolve to, yeah, be the hunters, the providers, the protectors. And when you're in that kind of... State, you can't you can't be worried about people's emotions and you can't get bogged down by the roller coaster ride yeah that that are, that are emotions and feelings so our brains function differently our bodies are different and our hormones are different. I don't need to go into any great detail about that. Anybody with common sense knows that. <laughs> um, so we're different. Men and women are different. It's just a fact. And anyone that says we're not just doesn't want to actually accept reality. Or they've got another agenda going on to try and convince everybody that Gender is a social construct and it's just how you feel. You decide if you're a man or a woman. And it's just absolute nonsense. It's absolute insanity. And it's it's really creating so much conflict between the sexes and so much unhappiness actually ultimately for women because women are missing out. They're missing out on the gift of life that they can offer. They're missing out on the absolute joy of family and the absolute dedication of a man because they think going out and being a power woman and empowered women 
and a boss lady. But that's going to be more fulfilling than just, just being a housewife and just being a mum. So I'm here to offer women of the 21st century, and particularly young girls, or young women in their late teens and early 20s, a different viewpoint. And that is that maybe being a woman as you are, being a nurturer, being a wife, being a mother, being a homemaker is actually something to strive for. And it's actually a real gift and a real blessing. Because again, as I said in my last video, at the end of the day, your children will love you forever. But your boss will get rid of you at the drop of a hat. So deep down, what women actually want is strong men and strong leaders. But what we're being told we want is sensitive new age guys, the snag. So now you've got these, these real kind of floppy metro guys with their... Anyway, I'm not going to go there. But my point is, is that feminism and politically, political correctness is actually damaging our boys big time. And we're not allowing boys to be boys, we're not allowing men to be men. And men are the leaders of their own destiny and they need to go out in the world, have their goals, have their plans, strive for what they want in life, strive to be independent, they're warriors. And yeah, we might not be at war, but going out into the world and creating something, they're the builders. Like you look at this world, I guarantee you that this park here was created by men. They would have tamed this land. They built all those houses down there. They built the school down there. They build the roads. They build the cars. They take the rubbish away. They, they design our cities. And it's not because of the patriarchy, it's because that is who they instinctively are. They are builders. They are creators. They can have ideas and bring it into fruition. They can mathematically work out the angles of a house. They can mathematically work out how to put a roof on. For goodness sake, that just, honestly, I can't think of anything more boring. Trying to figure out how, how to put a house together and then actually have to go and build it. Like... I'm sorry, but that's not just because I was conditioned not to like it. It's because my brain doesn't think in a spatially mathematical kind of way. So we have a lot to be thankful for. You know, look at this beautiful building over here. Men would have designed and created this building, not women. I mean, look, maybe the, maybe the woman did, did have some part to play in this garden. Who knows? I don't know. But what I'm saying is that um, the big structures, the big buildings, what we call civilised society was created by men. And we need to be grateful for that. You know, and women, women are the glue of society. We, we, we're, we're the community builders. We're the... We're, we're the ones who remember the birthdays and organise the family get-togethers and we know how to bring a group of people around a table with nice food and create an enjoyable atmosphere. Women love to gather in groups, drink cups of tea and natter away. Everybody knows that. So... There are fundamental differences between men and women. And it's about time that women particularly realise that because if they want successful, healthy relationships, 
well, you know, a successful relationship where they can have a family and feel safe and have that longevity, they need to understand that men need to be the leaders of the household and they need to captain their own ship and there can only be one captain of the ship. Now the captain of the ship, he will often, you know, hang his hat up, particularly when he gets home, and be happy to hand over to the first mate and let her take the reins, which, you know, that has traditionally been the way that women are, you know, their domain is the household. And that's where they have a lot of the control. But they see that as a, a burden or as suffering or as enslavement basically they actually women these days feel like they don't want to be a slave to their husbands <laughs> and I just think well what happened to being a team what happened to division of labor purely for efficiency purposes based on biology and based on what you're good at so, I mean, in this day and age, you know, maybe sometimes the man is the better cook and maybe he loves cooking and maybe the woman doesn't. I don't know. So let the man do the cooking, but if he wants to. But the point is, um, for example, I'll give you a <clears throat> story that was told to me recently about a husband and wife who live with her parents and they have a young child and the husband is the only breadwinner in that household so four adults one child one sole earner and not only does he have to go out and work a full-time job but he then has to come home and do the dishes and put the kid to bed plus the other adults in the household which is his wife and his parents-in-law have said that he's not allowed to go and spend his own money on bought lunches during the week so this is the level of, I don't know how to put this, but disempowerment of men. We, we've just completely disempowered our men to make their own choices and to be the destiny, to be the, the leaders of their own destiny. And that's what they need. And they need, do need a support person and they do need a first mate to help them bring their goals into the world because men have a mind where they can do great things and they've got the physical strength to do it and what's wrong with being a support person or a loving partner a loving wife to a man who has the drive to set up a business or to um, gosh even be in politics or any of these other things that are actually quite overwhelming for most women. Most women feel very quickly emotionally overcome when they are under, under pressure and under stress. They get anxiety quite quickly and the level of anxiety medication that's being dished out these days is just through the roof. So It's just a reminder to look at our biology and look at what, what are women actually capable of and what are men capable of. And it doesn't make one of us better than the other because we are all equal under the eyes, in the eyes of the creator. And we're just different. And difference is okay. And we can respect each other's differences and we can support each other's weaknesses and we can be partners in this world because when we have strong marriages we have strong families and we have strong families we have strong communities and we have strong communities we have strong societies and it's much much less likely that nefarious forces the globalists the politicians the corporations can divide and conquer us when we're strong so we're at 20 minutes, I feel like much more than that and um, I probably don't lose people but that's, yeah, that's my third instalment of um, the flaws of feminism so 
let's get back to true femininity and true masculinity and let's appreciate each other's strengths and support one another to have healthy families. Okay folks, well you have a good afternoon and um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed this and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.